selecting and sizing nozzle blocks and nozzles for the NLB Torrent 50. NLB offers two styles of nozzle blocks for the Torrent 50. The small nozzle blocks are designed to allow the tool to fit into the smallest possible opening, down to 6 inches. The large nozzle blocks are designed to utilize extension arms, which position the orifices as close to the cleaning surface as possible. Both styles of nozzle blocks use the same nozzle inserts, retainers, and attenuators. The nozzle assembly consists of an O-ring, which seals the OD of the attenuator to the ID of the nozzle block, in the case of the small nozzle block, or the ID of the extension arms, in the case of the large nozzle blocks. The nozzle attenuator, another O-ring, which seals the OD of the nozzle insert to the ID of the attenuator, the nozzle insert, and the retainer, which serves to hold the nozzle assembly in place. The retainer features a curved surface to help smoothly direct water into the nozzle. The retainer does not hold the assembly in compression. This means that all of the sealing is done on the OD and the ID of the flow adapter. This greatly reduces the chance of extrusion and provides a static seal with superior operating life. The nozzle arms on the large nozzle assembly are sealed to the center assembly via a flat nose with an O-ring seal. This provides for a straighter arm and better overall geometry. Again, this is a static seal which provides exceptional operating life. The fine threads that are used allow the operator to get plenty of force on the face of the seal. Removing either the large or small nozzle block assemblies is accomplished by first removing this small shoulder bolt. This eliminates the need to drive a pin out. The assembly can then be easily lifted off the output shaft. The sealing portions of the nozzle block sit against two O-rings located on the output shaft. This makes taking the nozzle block on and off much easier. Located inside the operation manual, there are two nozzle charts, one for the large nozzle blocks and one for the small. Use the one that's appropriate for your nozzle block. Now, establish what pressure and flow you will be using the nozzle at. At this point, let's talk briefly about pressure drop and how it will impact the selection of nozzles. Pressure drop occurs as water moves its way through the water blasting system. The fittings, hose, and even the tool that you're using will all contribute to pressure drop. To estimate the pressure drop in your system, consult a pressure drop chart such as one found in the NLB accessory catalog. When using the nozzle block and nozzle insert selection charts, you need to use the true operating pressure at the nozzle. The pressure portion of the chart is located on the left-hand side, and the pressures increase as you move up the chart. The flow portion of the chart is located at the bottom. Those numbers increase as you move to the right. One set of lines that move through the chart are associated with the nozzle block part numbers that can be found near the top. The other set of lines are associated with nozzle part numbers. For this example, Let's say that we're using a pump operating at 20,000 PSI with a published flow rate of 38 gallons per minute. By consulting the pump manual, we find that the actual pump output is 92% of this theoretical flow. 38 times 0.92 equals 34.04. We'll round down and use 34 gallons per minute as our actual pump flow. To establish our actual operating pressure at the nozzle, we need to know what type of hose and how much we're going to be using. In this example, let's say that we will be using two 50-foot sections of hose with an inner diameter of one half inch. By consulting our pressure drop chart, we see that at 34 gallons per minute, each section of hose will result in a drop of 559 PSI. Since we're using two sections, our total pressure drop will be 1,118 PSI. Our actual operating pressure at the nozzle is 18,882 PSI. We can estimate that point on the chart at just below the 19,000 PSI line. Next, we'll find 34 gallons per minute on the flow portion of the chart. By moving across the chart from our actual operating pressure and up the chart from our actual flow, we arrive at this point on the chart. To select a nozzle, we'll start at this point and move left until we cross a nozzle line. In this example, 
The first line we cross is that for a 1.60 size nozzle. So the part number for the nozzles we will use is BM19048-1.60. To select our nozzle block, we need to move our point over to where it crossed the nozzle line. From here, we need to move to the closest nozzle block line. Note that this could be to the left or to the right. In this example, our point is very nearly directly between CM38135-6 and CM38135-5. But, under close examination, we can see that CM38135-5 is slightly closer. This is the nozzle block we will use. The location of this point can also help us to understand what adjustments we may need to make to our magnetic brake. If you had to move to the right to reach the nearest nozzle block line, you will most likely have to decrease the brake setting. If you had to move to the left, you will most likely have to increase the brake setting. The distance that we had to move to reach our line will tell us how much adjustment will need to be made. The further you needed to move, the greater the amount of adjustment.